I know I'm walking in the will of God, all of you can say that, then no matter what I'm opposed with, you know, you take on this attitude like y'all didn't fire, y'all didn't hire me. You can't fire me. God put me here. I'm not going nowhere until God allows it. And if he allows it, it's only because there's something else that's going on that I don't know about. And I still I'm not going to be the loser in this whole situation. That's what I'm saying. So I will. You won't hear us teaching that message or where it's all about blessings and all of us. No, no, it's about purpose and purpose is beyond blessing. There are times when it's when we we do suffer setbacks. Remember the last couple of weeks we talked about that. There are times when uh, as uh, Paul was writing about that we are distressed, troubled on every side. But he said, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed which means that you can be confused or even that word I later found out meant embarrassed about the situation that you're in. But you're not abandoned. You can be cast down, he said, which actually means to be thrown down so hard that it breaks you or it kills you. But we're cast down and it still don't kill us. And it happens so that um, so that the Excellence, memory teaching about this, so that the excellence of the power of God comes forth in our life. He gets all the glory. He gets the glory. So it's not that we don't we don't get perplexed. It's not that we don't get cast down. It's not that we don't have trouble on every side. But man, when you're walking in the purpose of God, everybody in the room can say it. There's something different when you know God's hand is on your life and I'm in his purpose, I'm in his will. Even when things don't seem like they're working out right, I know they are. I know they are. It's like you just finally get to this place where you're just convinced, God, I know you're doing something. I know something's going on behind the scenes on my behalf. I'm, I can't see it. I can't feel it. <laughs> God, I'm not feeling you right now. Well, why are you letting this happen to me? But I know, I know you. I know your character. Lord, I know that I can trust you. You're still making all things work together for my good. And sometimes it's hard to believe that all things are working together for our good because some of, some of the things that are happening to us are the result of even uh, choices that we made. And those are the ones that really feels like God ain't going to help me. It's one thing to get an attack from the enemy and like God's going to help me. But when it's kind of stuff that we do to ourselves, you know, I did the wrong thing, made the wrong decision. I, uh, you're not so sure God's going to help you in those situations. And that's the lie of the enemy. That when we make mistakes, when we make bad choices, even when we sin on purpose, that God ain't going to help me. It's not true. We will suffer the consequences of that decision. But it's not that God abandons us. In fact, he gives us grace. Woo, aren't you glad for the grace? I didn't know when we sung that today. That would come. He gives us grace. And grace means he gives us strength. He gives us favor. You know, and look at what's happened in all of our lives. I'm hearing your testimonies today. Did, did any of us do anything to deserve that kind of favor? To deserve that kind of job opening, to deserve that kind of favor from a boss or a co-worker that they would just suddenly take a liking to you? It, it wasn't me. <laughs> Especially in some cases, like, well, I ain't really want the job anyway. I ain't really want to go there. But it's <laughs> I didn't really want to have to do this. You know, God's given us favor with the people that that own this facility. But this ain't wasn't our choice. It ain't like we wanted to come here, but this is where God evidently wanted us. So he gave us favor. And uh, I can say, aren't, aren't, aren't you all so glad to be walking in the favor of God, in the purpose of God? I'm not where I'm. I ain't all of what I'm supposed to be. But Lord, thank God I ain't what I used to be. <laughs> And even where I am now, this still ain't where I'm going to be. Ain't that the best part? I still ain't now where I'm going to be. But when you all, everybody in the room right now, think about where you were at this time last year. Just think about where you were at this time last year and look at the faithfulness of God. Look at how much you've learned about him. Look at how much he's revealed about himself. 
even if your economic status hasn't changed, even if your financial status hasn't changed, even if relational statuses haven't changed, but look at what's happened on, on the inside. I'm nowhere near the person that I used to be. And even then, I wasn't happy with where I was then. <laughs> but look at where, how far he's brought us. Come on, just take a moment and thank him right now. Thank you, Lord, for how far you've brought us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In fact, he's not even comparing us to how far he's yet to bring us. He's just like we are with our own children. You know, how I'm looking at AJ and, you know, mom, you're probably like, look how big he is now. <laughs> you're just so glad. You're glad when they take their first steps. You're, you're so glad when they, you know, when every step of progress that, that they make, you're so thankful. You're so thankful for every step that they make. You know, good and bad. <laughs> You're just so thankful because you see them progressing. You see them growing. You see them moving. And that's how God feels about us. Too long have our, has our preaching and teaching in church been all about the do's and don'ts. And you ought to be doing this and you ought to be and you ought to be. And as if though God never gives anybody any credit or, or is thankful for how far he's been able to bring them. But God's a father. He's just like parents. You're just so glad when you see your kids. You took your first step in potty train. <laughs> you're, you're so glad. <laughs> no more diapers. I'm sure God is so thankful when we reach that point. No more diapers. <laughs> Can you imagine God looking at us when you were in that stage of life? No more diapers. You took your first step, and sometimes you do stumble, just like kids do. They'll fall while they're learning how to walk. But so many times we have preached sermons about the kid falling that we all don't say, thank the Lord brother so-and-so took his first steps. Thank the Lord that sister so-and-so made progress in the Lord. Yeah, she fell down, but look at how far God's been able to bring her in her life. No, we just hear the sermons about they fail. They fail, they fail, they fail. You walk in the door and it's almost like as soon as you walk in the door, did you fall today? <laughs> you know, that's pretty much, I mean, you, how many of you have grown up? You don't have to raise your hand, but you've been up around that kind of teaching and training in the church, in the house of God. It's all condemnation, condemnation, condemnation. And never a word that says God is pleased with you. Well done. God is pleased. Before Jesus had done anything, any miracles or anything, his dad was right there when he got baptized, come up out of the water and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. No miracles, no sermons, no nothing. Don't you know that God is just pleased with you because you are? Take a moment, just realize, just soak that in right now. Lord, I thank you that you're pleased with me. You're not angry. You don't always have a scowl on your face when you look at me. Thank you, Lord. You are pleased. You're pleased. Do you know that God calls you by your first name? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Like a daddy would, he's probably got a pet name for you. <laughs> That's just yours. The intimacy between you and the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on. Thank the Lord for this word today. Lord, we just receive this. Thank you, Lord. Didn't know you was going to take the meeting this way, but Lord, thank you for taking it this way. And we received this. We needed this word today. You kept speaking to my heart right from the beginning today uh, for us to prepare our hearts for a word. And we received this word. We receive it. Thank you, Lord. It is a necessary word. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for restoration. Thank you for renewal. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, for those of us that you are calling to this uh, next level of, of fasting and prayer, Lord, we thank you for giving us the strength to do it. Thank you, Lord. Those of you that have sensed that call, or the Lord is calling you into fasting and prayer, please don't compare yourself to religious folks that do it. The Lord just may tell you just to do it for one day uh, or, just the, or just one meal, but just do what he's saying do. And I don't want to try to project a picture like... Pastor Chris and Pastor Carol, we we do seven day fast and 21 and we all these super, super, <laughs> super saints and everything. We're just like you. We're just like you. Just do what he tells you to do in the moment. Thank you, Lord. Some of you, God is going to just continue to wake you up early in the morning and just get away with him. Get away with him. Thank you, Lord. It might only be 
uh, 10 or 15 minutes, but just take the time. You have no idea what he's setting up for you for the rest of the day. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for this lifestyle that you've called us into, this lifestyle of intimacy with you and walking with you. Thank you.